Hey, what's up guys? My name is Palm Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing a tutorial on the differences between the VPN protocols. If you're new to VPN, this video could help you out. If you have been using VPN for a while, but maybe you never realized exactly why you're using a certain protocol over another, this video can also give you some clarification. All right, guys, so let's get into the video. Hey guys, just a reminder to check out vpntierlist.com. It's a collection of all my ratings on the channel and you're gonna find lots of helpful information here on how to choose a VPN. Anyways, back to the video. So first up guys, we're gonna be talking about PP2P. PP2P stands for point to point protocol. So PPTP actually uses um, Microsoft's point to point encryption protocol. The protocol specifically is MPPE and MPPE implements RSA RC4 encryption algorithm with a maximum of 128-bit encryption key. Now, Microsoft's implementation of PP2P has some serious security vulnerabilities. It's vulnerable to dictionary attacks, and the, the algorithm itself is subject to a bit flipping attack as well. Microsoft itself does not really recommend people to use PP2P where security is concerned and confidentiality they actually recommend using something like IPSAC. That said, since PPTP uses RC4 and 128-bit keys, it has the least encryption overhead of all the protocols out there, making it the fastest protocol to use if you want the best speeds. PPTP uses TC port 1723 and GRE protocol 47, which means that PPTP can be easily blocked by restricting the GRE protocol. So it's easily blockable compared to most other VPN protocols out there. The good thing about PPTP though is that it's easily supported by Windows and most other operating systems. It's quite old and has pretty good support, not requiring any kind of application download. All you need is a username and password for the servers and you can get it connected pretty much on any device, which is cool. Now PPTP is not reliable or able to recover as quickly as some other protocols it's a little bit janky in that area it also has a lot of compatibility issues and the gre protocol doesn't really work that good with a lot of routers if you're looking to make a vpn router with vpn housewide wi-fi so pptp has some pretty good speeds and device compatibility but there's not really that many good use cases for it it's not very secure it's not very good at staying connected and being compatible in that way it's not that good on routers it's just kind of an outdated protocol so i wouldn't recommend using it that much now ike v2 stands for internet key exchange version 2 it's part of the ipsec protocol suite in a lot of ways it's one of the best protocols out there for sure it's used a lot ike v2 implements a large number of cryptographic algorithms including 3des aes blowfish Camellia and encryption is pretty strong here. Now, IPSEC doesn't really have any known security vulnerabilities or safety things you need to worry about like PP2P does. It's a strong protocol from the kind of like the technological standpoint. However, there are leaked NSA presentations that indicate that internet key exchanges can be exploited by the NSA to decrypt IPSEC traffic. People don't really know, you know, if this is true or not. There are leaked documents, so there is a possibility that NSA has some kind of way to decrypt Ike V2, which is definitely concerning. Speed with IPSEC and Ike V2 is very good. Um, probably pretty comparable to OpenVPN. You're gonna get a little bit faster connection times with Ike V2, which is probably one of my favorite things about it and makes it kind of quicker to start up your VPN. Now, Ike V2 uses UDP 500 for an initial key exchange, um, and you can't really customize the ports or anything like that when configuring Ike V2 with um, you know, your VPN provider. So due to this reliance on its this port, it's easier to block than OpenVPN, which has more ports to configure. Most mobile systems and operating systems do support Ike V2, which is good to see. And you'll find that on iOS and Android, some of the default configurations for VPN provider will be using Ike V2. Now, IPSEC Ike V2 is a little bit more complex than OpenVPN and can 
require a little bit more additional configuration between uh, routers, but you know, as long as the server and client both support NAT transversal, there shouldn't be too many issues. Ike v2 is a really good protocol. I like how fast it connects, especially if a VPN can support it. Not every VPN does support Ike v2. Most commonly you'll see open VPN, which we're gonna be talking about next. However, you're gonna see it much more on mobile devices and it works really well. There's not really that many security vulnerabilities you need to worry about. Besides maybe this theory that the NSA could crack it, which is kind of concerning. Um, but, you know, it depends on how far you want to go down the rabbit hole for that one. Next up on the list, of course, we have OpenVPN. Now, OpenVPN is an open source VPN protocol developed by OpenVPN Technologies. Um, it's extremely popular, probably the most popular protocol used from VPN providers. It uses a custom security pro protocol using SSL and TSL. TLS for key exchange so it provides um, a good amount of security that way it doesn't really have any known kind of security vulnerabilities or anything like that um, and it uses the open SSL library to provide encryption uh, with a lot of um, encryption options like AES blowfish and stuff like that most commonly you're going to see AES 256 bit keys for open VPN now, OpenVPN performs pretty similarly to Ike v2, so you're gonna get really good speeds here with OpenVPN as well. Now, OpenVPN has some really cool strengths, like its ability to be configured on different ports, which gives it kind of the ability to bypass a lot of firewalls and stuff a little bit more easier than Ike v2. OpenVPN, however, is not really um, supported on a lot of softwares, like with iOS, you're gonna have to download the OpenVPN application and do it that way, you're not really gonna be able to use it on a lot of apps because it, there's kind of like a licensing thing. It's usually implemented through software that you have to download. Now, OpenVPN is actually pretty good to use over wireless and cellular kind of connections. Um, you can switch between UDP and TCP. Um, TCP is good for unreliable connections, but it does sacrifice a little bit performance when compared to UDP part of OpenVPN. OpenVPN, of course, is the most popular protocol used among VPN providers. It's extremely fast. There's not really many security vulnerabilities. There's not any kind of connections to NSA or anything like that, like I mentioned before with IKE v2. Um, and it's very good protocol. The one thing about it, though, is it is getting older and there could be more room for improvements, you know, in other newer protocols, like we'll discuss in a second. It does have a lot of code and it's getting a little bit congested, but it's still a very good protocol right now. And it's probably the one you should be using hands down if your VPN doesn't support Ike v2 on, you know, your PC or something like that. So WireGuard is the newest protocol and a lot of people have a lot of hype for it. It's extremely fast and it has a kind of state of the art cryptographic design. It's more efficient, it has a small code base and stuff like that. It's built atop Chata 20 for symmetric encryption, it has a lot of different kind of new ways to enhance security and stuff like that. However, the thing you gotta remember with the WireGuard is that it is experimental right now. It's not ready for public use case, so you shouldn't really use it if you really are concerned about complete security. That is for OpenVPN. WireGuard is for experimental use, and some VPN providers are starting to implement WireGuard, like Molvad, iVPN, a couple other ones. However, some VPN providers like AirVPN, which I really like, don't implement WireGuard yet because it's not ready. I think a VPN like TorGuard does it really well. They give you possibility of testing out some WireGuard servers with a WireGuard application, but they haven't really implemented it for everyone to use. That said, WireGuard does have some pretty promising things coming in the future. Like it's really good ability to work on mobile devices. It could potentially save battery because it has a smaller code base and it's more efficient code than OpenVPN while kind of resulting in similar security. So I think WireGuard shows a lot of promise, but it's not necessarily ready yet. Anyways, guys, these are my breakdown of all the different protocols you'll probably see when considering VPN protocols and the VPN provider that you choose. Personally, OpenVPN and Ike v2 are my favorite right now. WireGuard shows good promise for the future, but isn't quite ready yet. Let me know down in the comments down below which is your favorite protocol, and I'll see you again on the next video very soon.